All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome Aman Gatula, who is in London. How are you doing, Aman? Very, very well, John. How about yourself? Excellent, excellent. And Aman is the head of growth at uh, New Optima and AlphaWell Brands. And what we're going to talk about today is a great subject. We're going to talk about the top five ways to market, advertise, and promote a product-based business today. So let's uh, let's get straight into it, Aman. One of the things that people struggle with today is that product pay, product-based businesses, uh, a lot of times, customers or consumers. Uh, they 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 look at them as kind of commodities, right? They're all swappable. They're very much the same. There's not that much difference between them. So so how do you start uh, as a product based business? How do you start to market yourself and get past this commoditization? Really, really interesting question. Um, I've sort of suffered from this commoditization uh, issue when we were launching our CBD marketplace. We were. Mm. Um, we were Europe's largest leader in 12 months and we were selling over 200 plus brands who, um, if I took away the label from all of them, they basically look the same. So right. I, it, it was the, it was the definition of commoditized goods. Um, and the most obvious answer to that is branding. Like the, the more you can connect with the consumer beyond your product, beyond like the functional features, uh, the more you can own that mind share. Um, and I found one very specific way to do that, which is really well, is to create a brand enemy. And if you can leverage your, your let's say, commoditized goods and compare it to a brand enemy, you, you create a new position for yourself in the market. It's it's not someone something that anyone can come and you know pick the same enemy if you were doing it for a year or half a year. It's too late for them at that point. So explain, explain a little bit more detail about uh, picking the brand enemy and how that process works. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's an interesting journey where you you spend a lot of time talking to your customers and understanding what their alternative solutions were to your product before you mm -hmm. ever existed or before that was. And you start to understand that consumer's pain point and very naturally product enemies start to appear. And, and I'll give you an example. Um, let's talk about CBD, for example, and uh, CBD mm -hmm. oils. Before CBD oils were a thing and we started speaking to consumers, they were really, um, upset specifically about pain. So the best type of CBD consumer is a chronic pain user mm -hmm. um, or a chronic pain sufferer even. And they're so used to being told by the doctor, oh, it'll get better or you know, just, you've know, got to wait a little bit longer or have some paracetamol, maybe have some ibuprofen, um, put some DP on. And these become your consumer's enemies in a sense. Like they're not working for them. They're bad solutions. Right. And you start to pick up art like, okay, interesting. If I can if I can somehow put myself as an alternative or a superior to these ideas about, you know, a doctor who doesn't care about you, a gel that warms you up, but doesn't actually do anything to you, um, a, a painkiller you take, but you don't actually know is working. If you can create enemies around these ideas and you can create something that's very visceral to the consumer. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that that that's fascinating uh, because at the end of the day, yeah, that's where the if you can get that emotional response, that's the first step of moving away from the commoditization right exactly exactly commoditization happens on on features it's it's mm -hmm. like and everything's a commodity nowadays like you know globalization um the ability to ship anything from anywhere like everything can be a commodity in the fact that i can copy someone else overnight if i really wanted to shows that as mm -hmm. well there is only one real differentiator which is brand and that comes with very clever thinking very specific languaging, very specific wording, um, and imagery. You you, just, you want to create an image in, in the consumer's mind that you're different and you're special and you're you're there to help them, um, and you're more than just the features. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's get let's get into what are the what are the five best ways to market, advertise, and promote a product based business. Yep. Yep. So um, I'll go through them, let's say one at mm -hmm. a time and um, in no order, really, because um, right. the order really depends on your your product and, and your where your consumer lives. But I see them to be SEO, Amazon, email, or organic short form and word of mouth. So all these five forms, they um, they get the consumer where they're ready to buy. Um, they're very one-to-one -one feeling 
um, and and they work on on multiple different levels. So we can kick it off maybe with um, with Amazon. Yep, let's go. So Amazon is a really interesting growth channel for product based businesses. Um, there is a preconception that most owners of product based businesses have around Amazon is that you know it's only for cheap products, it's only for low quality products. Mm -hmm. um, that's really changing. Um, a lot of direct to consumer brands are shifting over to Amazon because of you know really poor performance on paid social. Right. Um, and that goes into a wider you know discussion about why is paid social not working very well um what, what are the difficulties and you can go into you know privacy updates ios updates um but the end biggest reason is when you're on amazon you're there to shop right yes you have a need and you want it fulfilled um and it means if you are a let's say a well-priced brand and you're, you're selling a very good product you can you can get that sale very easily we're talking conversion rates between 20 and 40 percent it, it's absolutely uh -huh crazy and I, I will compare that to direct to consumer a good direct to consumer brand is getting between two and four percent conversion rates yeah 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 that's amazing and um, one just one quick thing on on amazon i presume then it's not just a case of, of going on amazon but it's also optimizing how you interact with amazon you know product description you know everything if you're going to put a store in there like all of that that it's important to do it's not just going on amazon but it's having a strategy right Correct, correct. Going on Amazon is it's so easy. I could I could put a store up tomorrow. You could put up a store mm -hmm. tomorrow. Sell a book or sell whatever you wanted to sell. Um, but so, you you got there's so much strategy behind it, and you can. I'll, I'll give you one of the biggest Amazon ranking factor, and it's review numbers. Mm -hmm. So, Amazon will preferentially show um, based on you know it's almighty algorithm the, the the product with the best reviews basically um, goes to the top. So if you're very late to a category. Um, so let's say like no vitamin C I don't mm -hmm. know, tablets or whatever. You, if you were to start a new vitamin C tablet company, like you're, you're very late and it's yeah. very like if I go, if I went on Amazon right now, the, the top product has about 20,000 reviews. That's extremely difficult to catch up to. I, I'd almost argue there's probably no point to some degree mm -hmm. of you wasting your budget trying to compete there. So the strategy comes in a sense of a, how am I going to get reviews really quickly? Um, and Am I competing in a niche where that's even possible? Like, can I can I try to challenge for first position with a new mm -hmm. product, with no, with no social standing, um, on on a listing that doesn't look amazing? Let's say now there are loads of other little factors like you know optimizing product description, optimizing your listing headlines, um, but you know the biggest biggest racking factor is going to be reviews. If you don't have enough reviews, right. why should I buy you? That's the first thing I do as a consumer, right? You, you look mm -hmm. at reviews. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like that one star. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to go for these guys. I'll go for the next one. No, no, ex exactly. No, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. And obviously like gathering reviews, it's not as easy as it sounds, especially nowadays. Um, let me ask you a bit about then email. You said email is another one that's still uh, critical. Uh, obviously with email, you know, people have various opinions about, but tell me why you still consider it essential. Emails, probably one of the only channels where I can market for free iteratively. Mm -hmm. like I can, I can send a second email or a third email at basically no cost, um, which is highly attractive for me as, as you know, a marketer or a growth lead. Um, maybe where the skepticism or the, the fear lies like, Oh, I don't, do you want to be spamming your customers? Are you talking to them too much? And, and, and the question is if you're trying to, you know, shove offers down their throat, probably that's true. Um, but mm -hmm. if you're talking to your consumer in a way that is respectful of them, their time, um and is you know giving them content that they want then that, that's completely fair too so um for example you know on a weekly cadence um you know an email about a product-based business is, is completely fair um they can always unsubscribe if they want to um and you can talk beyond your product you can talk about the problems that you're trying to help them solve right. so another example let's say you're selling i don't know a back scratcher let's say for whatever reason or um <laughs> Your consumer's got this issue and there's more there's more than that you know you don't have to talk about back scratches for every single email you're gonna get very boring of that you can talk about right. you know the funny parts of it um yeah, um i, I know animals who need i need their back scratch right. let's say it, it goes it goes much more beyond the product um and people do it for you know comedic reasons they do it for informational reasons educational reasons there are so many ways that email can, can generate you revenue and mm. it's very predictable um if i send a a sales focused email i can you know 
predict to a high confidence the placed order rate based on the number of recipients. And I can pretty much know that if I send that email, I'm going to make I know, a grand, two grand, three grand the next day. Wow. And, and and it's that's very interesting. But then you say also the word of mouth, because that's that's interesting, too, because, you know, I find a lot of a lot of companies, even consumer focused companies still come off as very removed or remote from, you know, you don't even imagine this people working there half the time because you get. So for me, if if I'm going to give word of mouth to something like I have to have had a really good customer experience. For sure, 100 percent. And that's kind of why I wanted it in there as a, as a as a big caveat saying that, you know, all these things will work, but they're, they're not hacks to a good product. Mm -hmm. They're not hacks to, you know, if you're not serving your consumer as well, you're not going to nothing else will work in the end of the day. Um, word of mouth, I feel, is just not measured. It's not very well measured, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the B2B world has caught up on this quite recently. But in, in the B2C world, um, I had self-attribution um post checkout you know for, for all of time let's say so as soon as the consumer finished checkout i had a they were you know given to a thank you screen and it would say how did you hear about us and right. and i think to my shock before this exercise i didn't even think word of mouth was a thing i didn't even th i thought mm -hmm. it was like you know generating zero percent no one knows about my brand no one knows about me and then shockingly 30 percent of my buyers said they found out from a friend like that's mm. such a huge number and i was just yeah. in shock like it's huge and then very recently on LinkedIn, you see everyone talking about self-attribution, having a form, um, and they're all seeing the same thing too. Like word of mouth drives huge amounts of decision making. Um, and I think it goes to a wider point about society is we don't know where truth is anymore. Like yeah. we, we find truth in, in our friends and our family, and we need that source of truth to make decisions on buying. Yeah. Well, to your point, I mean, that's uh, that's one of the issues with reviews now, isn't it? I mean, sometimes, you know, when you look at me, say on Amazon, like if I go through, you have to start looking at reviews kind of carefully. And if you see like 20 five star reviews, but they're all posted a day after each other, then you're going to go, really? Or if you see, uh, you know, so and even with negative ones, you also got to look at, you know, what the history. So there's it's not as straightforward as it used to be, obviously. For sure, for sure. It's I don't know what the solution is here because I think everyone in this model is incentivized to continue. Up. There's no one's incentivized to make truth, right? Like right. Uh, the review companies want their badges to be shown everywhere. They want to. They, they you know like how certain review companies, even if you're like a four star or a five star, it will still show your like your stars as like quite high. Let's say Amazon does yeah. the same thing. Um, no one's incentivized to say truth. Which, which I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how this such model is solved. Middle model is solved. <laughs> gaining yeah, no, I, I I agree with you. I, I don't I don't know either, and um, uh, it's definitely. I mean, it's a struggle when you know to 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 gain that kind of or to establish that level of of credibility because there is so much uh, there's so much noise out there. And talk to me a little bit about SEO because here's the thing that. Obviously, everybody everybody's heard of. Most people have a sort of a cursory understanding of, of what it is. But let's face it, every company is getting bombarded every day by SEO experts telling them that they're not doing this and they're not doing that and they should be doing this and they should be doing that. And it's really hard for, for people to to figure out what is it exactly they should be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the reason why SEO is an interesting channel is because unlike paid ads, where you're showing your ads to people who you think might be relevant to buy seo is when you're showing content to people who are literally saying i am qualified mm -hmm. they are making that google search being very open here what are the benefits of this how to do this like very open about what they're thinking is and so there's not many channels in the world where you're able to get a consumer out there like you know qualification stage or you just know where they are on that journey it's a really interesting place to be appearing um especially when you consider uh, the idea of prototypicality where, you know, the, the consumer sees you first and you kind of define what the category is, if that makes sense. And you can, you mm -hmm. can become their definition of what's, who's the leader in, you know, whatever, let's say, say, say your CRM tool or et cetera. So SEO is really interesting in the sense that you're capturing the audience at the right time and you're serving an, a good piece of content. Um, I completely agree with you. Like, you know, SEO experts are bombarding people. And I, I think, SEO people have kind of got it wrong. They, they they try to differentiate themselves on these technical issues or these really you know nuanced points. Um, when in reality consumers don't like them, it's confusing, mm -hmm. and then they start over-indexing on them for no reason. 
Like, you know, I could look at any website, say your meta tags are like this, you have 404 errors right. here, your site speed's low, your CLS is like, so what? Yeah, it's, yeah, just yeah, yeah. So, it's just so beyond the point. And our big, my, my big belief and our big belief is that, you know, like in terms of SEO, 80% of, of ranking factors is just based on good content. If you create good yeah. content, you will appear for the right keyword and your consumer will engage with you and develop a relationship with you. Everything yeah, beyond no. that you know it's it's small playing and anyone else can you know, everyone could do the small little technical bits if they have to put the time into it mm -hmm. yeah so i mean i would definitely uh you know take with a pinch of salt if you get those emails saying like oh every you're doing everything wrong and i'll get you on i'll get you the top ranking on the top page and you're going i bet you can't though really because let's face it you know uh, I'd be happy yeah. to be, you know, I'd be happy to be on the first page regardless. Um, so um, <laughs> the last one you mentioned was, uh, the, the last one you mentioned was organic. Organic short form. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's kind of a note, form. it's kind of a note to TikTok and I don't want to really want to say TikTok or YouTube or mm -hmm. short reels, but I think it's just this trend that we want information shorter, faster and sharper. Um, mm. and we want to consume through video a lot more. Um, and if we're able to create short form content that like, you know, educates and takes people on like a little mini journey of a 20, 30 seconds, it's, it's really powerful because you're able to capture that interest. And then you can take that short form piece and funnel that traffic to a long form, form piece later on. And you can, and at one point, you, you know, you, you deserve the consumer's trust and, you know, attention, but short form video, it's just taking the world by storm and if you're not doing it, you're, you're, you're missing this whole, you know, changing consumer content consumption. It's absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the interesting thing about it too, now about the short form is, I mean, you did mention TikTok, but obviously now YouTube has stories, Instagram has reels and stories. So it's become, it's across all platforms. And I guess the good thing about it is if you do produce this short form content, you can leverage it on all of these platforms at the same, at the same time, because they're all copying each other. So I guess that's the upside is you can create once and deploy multiple places. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You create once, you deploy multiple places, um, which kind of will force short content to become even shorter. So I think I believe the reason why short form content even exists is because, you know, let's say back in the day, we didn't have short form content as much. And it was, you know, deep editorial, long pieces, long copywriting ads. And then with the ease of content creation, more and more content was created. And so I can't invest half an hour into each piece of mm -hmm. content that comes my way. I need to like, you know, be very picky about what I invest my time into. And so to gain that, you know, that investment, the content has to get shorter and shorter and shorter and show the benefits and the features as, as succinctly and you know, as sharp as possible. And with even more people pumping and pumping out more content, this is going to become more and more of a thing where like the content's got to get sharper, shorter, more concise, more clear. Um, and it will eventually stabilize around something, I guess. But um, it's, the more we create, the, the shorter it has to become, I guess. Yeah, I mean, because it's an inter it is an interesting phenomenon. Like I, I was doing an interview a while back, uh, talking to somebody, and I was just saying, like, if everybody's creating content, who's actually consuming it? To your point, though, is that um, you know everybody's a content creator. Every kind of oh, pump out content, pump out content. Um, you know, the quality obviously is is uh, leaves some somewhat to be desired. But to your point, I mean it's created a ton of noise and a ton of out there that you have to find some way of, of breaking through that noise. Yeah. You got to find some way of breaking through that noise. Um, or alternatively, whoever you break through that noise to, you better keep them. Yeah. And the only way you keep them is you just had, you had created very good content in the first place and you actually deserve their attention, which again, goes back to the fact, you know, high quality will always trump everything in this, in this world, especially as, as content gets more noisier and more voluminous, let's say um so yeah if you can keep from retaining people better then you're probably going to win far far beyond everyone else yeah absolutely well listen aman this has been fantastic uh so we've gone through the top five ways to market advertise and promote a product-based business seo amazon email organic short form and word of mouth uh so all of aman's information is going to be below this uh video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do Awesome. Yep. Yeah. I'm the head of growth at Alpha Well Brands. So we are a brand acquisition group. We buy and we scale uh, health and wellness brands. So we own Europe's largest CBD marketplace and we own the leading soy scented candles brand in the US. Um, my role specifically, I work on growing uh, the, the, you know, the Alpha Well brand portfolio and also work on 
building our agency arm, which is basically our whole in-house marketing team operates as an agency for different brands. Um, and so we, we think like brand owners first and then we execute on other client brands after. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again. Great insights. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Cheers. Thank you.